the British Raj, the crown jewel of the empire, the rich Indian subcontinent, ruled by a white guy apparently. Today Hearts of Iron A to Z brings us to the British Raj, India, the colonial subject of Great Britain and crown jewel of the British Empire. So what are we going to do here today? Well, I'm thinking we have some shenanigans. We cannot get Mahatma Gandhi as a leader, but we can get him as an advisor. He sucks, but I'm going to get him for the meme because I'm thinking we play this run in the spirit of Mahatma Gandhi. We will embrace communism, extreme violence, and nuclear fire. Yep, that's what we're gonna do today, so let's go. I say the whole world must learn of our peaceful ways by force. <laughs> gonna start by just getting rid of the entire army. It doesn't matter. The focus tree is not brilliant. It's it's all right, but like most of the together for victory focus trees, it's small plus like half the stuff is locked behind world tension so yay anyway let's go grab ourselves some uh railways i guess and then down into the industry tree let's get that extra research slot military factories well okay convoys sure i'm gonna start by building infrastructure in my steel producing provinces i'm not gonna fall for the trap of building in burma uh because we will lose burma more or less but we'll, we'll hold on to most of it but not all of it now for research we do have a couple of bonuses here but they're mostly related to the Commonwealth Research Pack, so we're gonna try to get a nice amount of uh, speed buffs from this, but we won't be in this faction forever, so we'll, we'll take what we can get. I'm just gonna start uh, jumpstarting the industry a bit, as well as our research. I'm thinking we open with free trade. I could hire the silent workhorse, but mostly he's a trap. By the time he's paid himself off, you're already, well, well into the game. So I don't think he's usually worth it. Uh, popular figurehead is a very good choice, but I think the extra factories plus the small bonuses I can get from free trade are better. I mean, we are getting a nice amount of factories from trade, so I think we want to lean into that until we're ready to stand on our own. Sweet extra research slot, which is well required because we start with two and I think we can get three more for a focus tree. Now let's go grab stability man and I think our next pick should probably be the chief of the army so we can start getting some army experience. Fortunately, we have a bit of time before we can even do anything, so we, we, can, we can take our time, build up a little. I'm gonna build like one or two, maybe three civilian factories as well to start and then we're gonna slowly convert into military and we're gonna go hard. I'm also using a 25% bonus I get from being in that research group to get my artillery. I, I'd like to start making them as soon as I can because I think I'll be leading into artillery heavily. Tanks are not really a viable option so artillery is gonna be my damage source of choice plus air. I think we have a good focus tree for air plus we get some bonuses from being in the uh, same faction as the British. All right chief of the army we can either go with the reformer or with the offense expert like it takes a while before we go to war i'm thinking we pick the reformer first and then switch him out when we need the extra offense this gives us more army experience and we don't need that much political power anyway so 100 pp over the course of the game isn't that much plus you know he, he does grant us quite a bit of extra experience which is nice well and since i'm going air should probably get like the chief of the air force first or early on at least then get the aircraft design designer yeah yeah we'll want to lean into that i think we want to lean into that i don't think we'll have the economy to do much of anything outside of infantry and air so yeah and meanwhile uh, let's grab as many of these bonuses i can off the uk provincial elections and then straight down to the all india forward block and like i said i think we're gonna go with communism and reach out to papa stalin mostly because I th it would align more with with Gandhi. Obviously, we choose Swarai. It is explicitly named for Gandhi. So, I mean, it's his concept of self-rule. We, we have to take it. So the Quit India movement seems pointless. We will get our independence some other way. The two nation theory might be nice to modify that uh, marginalized communities thing. And I do intend to release Pakistan anyway, but as a puppet. And I don't know if this interferes with that. I don't know when that two nation theory thing kicks in. I'm going to leave that for now and just go forward with independence. Time to hire our communism man and ask Papa Stalin for help. Now, I have never seen the Soviet Union actually offer help. I'm going to improve relations just to see if it matters, but I've, I've never seen that work. So if you know how to get it to work, 
Mark, let me know. I, I just never, never manage. All right, there we go. A little bit of a civil war. Don't worry about it. Yes, it looks bleak because we have no army. But guess what? The other side also has no army. Don't worry about it. We're going to make an army. Go into our vision designer, create an empty one, and just pick half. Just a single battalion of cavalry. Cue as many of them as you can. Just, just spew out as many of these as possible. And we're going to deploy them on the front. As for focuses, we're going to get Rani of Jansi. Jansi. I don't know how to pronounce that. We'll get Lakshmi. And then we can do rebuilding the nation, which actually gives us a reasonable amount of factories for 70 days. So that's that's one of the few good focuses India has. And we'll use the fact that we're at war to also grab partial mobilization in a bit. Look at them go. They still have like two, three divisions, maybe. It doesn't matter because e even if they have like one division on, on Delhi, I'll, I'll just circle Delhi, take the rest of the country and it's over. Bada bing, bada boom. I'm gonna delete this army again because I want to recruit an actual army. And we want to preempt the problems we'll have with Pakistan and Burma. So Pakistan will declare independence and either we can be okay with that or we can fight them. Fighting them is a horrible proposition because they start with a lot of divisions and the terrain is terrible. They also have no resources to offer you, so why fight them? Burma, however, will also secede when they see you're busy fighting Pakistan or when they see Pakistan got its way. Burma does have some stuff we want to keep around. Around. So what are we going to do here? Go into our occupied territories, release the nation of Burma as a puppet, we'll retain our own course, and we'll do the same for Pakistan. Release the nation, retain states with our core. They want freedom, they have their independence, more or less their independence, but they still are our puppets, which is going to be beneficial to us in the long run. And now we start training an actual army because I have enemies to fight and we must mobilize everything and everyone we must build many many military factories moving forward and while we're waiting to uh strike out on our own i'm gonna quickly make a quick stop here in thailand or siam we're gonna justify a war goal any place will do and we're simply going to puppet them now why do i want to fight siam well i can fight siam for free even though world tension is high because i have not generated more than 10 percent world tension for those of you wondering how that works democratic nations can get guarantee people once world tension is over 25%, but the AI will only start using guarantees if the person or the country doing the justification for war has itself generated more than 10% world tension or the faction therein. So if you're on your own, you've not generated any world tension, you essentially get a free war goal. This is the first time I get this event after releasing Pakistan. I've played this like a couple of times and it never fired. The Indian Civil War never fired. Don't really know why, but I'm going to click that button and see what it does. Okay, so there's still my puppet. It just got East Bengal. Okay, I would like that back, obviously. Uh, it doesn't really have much, but... You know, it, it, it looks horrible. I'm thinking we hire Gandhi for the meme. Obviously, we must have Gandhi in the government. If he cannot lead our country, he will advise our leaders. Well, since I want to grab the research slot anyway, let's go and get our first nuclear bonus. Eventually, we will we will light the nuclear fires in Europe. Just not yet. All right, we're also close to uh, our justification on Siam. Let's get the army in position. And I'm going to switch my doctrine over to superior firepower. It is my favorite. If you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you'll know. Justification is finished. We're just going to declare war, walk the army in there. I don't really think we have all that much to worry about, considering they're not that tough. They shouldn't have the troops to really stop me. And Bangkok Falls. Is that enough? Eh... Almost. All right, this is nothing but a mopping up operation now. I uh, gotta keep building mills. I'm also building in Burma and Pakistan to get their independence down so I can use more of their factories, get their resources cheaper, and I want to eventually reintegrate them, at least Pakistan, because, you know, I, I, want, I want my core back. I have researched improved airframes, and uh, let's make these the best fighters money can buy, or at least the best fighters Indian money can buy. Mini rupees. Uh, best engines, best guns with some cannons. I will need drop tanks for the range. I will need self-sealing fuel tanks. And I'm going to add, I think, armor plates for a little bit of extra oomph. And these should do nicely. And I'm going to do the same for my uh, my basic cast. Just make them a little bit better. There goes Siam. I'll take their navy. We'll puppet them and add resource rights, which is sweet. Best thing they added in by blood alone. And we'll take all of their factories as well. There we go. Go. And we're going to have a chat here with Papa Stalin, see if I can join his faction. I don't need any more free war goals. I need to focus on getting 
my army ready to invade Japan. And war economy is the best economy time we switched out. Oh, it looks like Stalin's gone to war with Finland. Might as well join that. Mostly to see if I can, if I can funnel more guns into my country. These guys need to be trained. I also need to train more paratroopers. I'm gonna queue up a bunch of extra divisions and I'm gonna start begging for guns. Please, please, any guns would be much appreciated. It's it's the little things in life. I need guns. Stalin needs emotional support. It's it's a fair trade. I don't actually intend to go to Finland, but I will support him all the way. So yeah, that's a nice amount of guns and all I had to do was take a hit to my- Oh, oh no. Well, pretty big hit to my stability and war support, but Finland's almost dead anyway. Gonna go grab atomic research while we're here. We got a nice bonus to it. The research speed is okay. And since I'm going for the nukes anyway, might as well. The guns have arrived. That definitely helps. Oh, baby. And I am training some paratroopers. Now, usually I make really small paratroopers to just be able to flood my target with, with paradrops. Um, in this case, I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to go with decked out paratroopers. So I'm going to add as many support companies like recon, maybe just to ensure that the paratroopers I send over are going to be capable of fighting for and taking a port. Unfortunately, it means I can only train two, but should be able to train more once the rest of these guys deploy. It is December of 1940, though, so I have two or three months left before I really need to get myself into gear. I need to be ready to paradrop this port above Aomori. Sweet, I can reduce the autonomy of a subject. That should get me more factories. I'm gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna take one army under Lakshmi. I think she has the best shot of making this uh, a win. Move them over to Vladivostok. The paratroopers, all right, force deploy these guys, the paratroopers. No, it's only two paratroopers. I need to change this template so I can deploy more of them. I'm going to remove one unit and there'll be 16 with and I can deploy three of those. Should I add like anti-air? Maybe it might help. And maybe I should also add cavalry recon. It might help just to make that initial push, make them elite as well and prioritize these guys. As soon as they are ready to deploy, uh, I'm going to send them over to this airfield along with my entire air force and everything that I can put up in the sky. We're going to try it. We're just going to go for it. I need to make that power drop happen or might as well give up and go home. Alternatively, I could make these like 12 with and they'll still be reasonably combat capable. It's cost me a lot of army XP, but I can train more. Yeah, four. All right, four. We'll keep it at four. I think this is all right. Stian, Jordan, Tim and Shu, I am counting on you boys. Get me the win here. Germany is justifying for Barbarossa. I'm not going to get involved in Barbarossa. I might rush to the Soviet Union's aid eventually, but not yet. What I want to do, I'm going to lay out my, my immediate plans here. Knock out Japan. Take their fleet and what I can. Probably just going to be their fleet. Sail it over or find a way to get Portugal, Spain, Germany, anyone really to give me military access and use that to then knock out the United Kingdom and with that, the Allies. Again, steal their fleets, get the vengeance that India is due by humiliating the United Kingdom. And then maybe we take out Reich and rush to Papa Stalin's aid. Yeah. Terrible news. I've completely screwed up what I was going to do. I waited too long and Japan and the USSR have their non-aggression pact. I should have done this like two, maybe three months ago. Completely forgot about this. So we need to um, fix that. So I'm going to delete that. Give them a fallback order here. I'm going to be a little tricky here. I'm going to leave the faction. And before I do anything else, before even a second of time passes, I'm going to ask for military access. That way, at least our troops get to stay in the vicinity. The downside of that is I probably lose access to the airports. If I'm not mistaken, their airport's not going to be accessible to me for much longer. Nope, cannot use it. But that does mean I can justify on Japan now. It takes 30 days. Come on, there we go. We're immediately going to declare war. Yes, we're going to have to fight Italy and Germany. So be it, I'll adjust. We'll take out Japan, take out the Axis, and then take out the Allies, provided I don't have to fight the USA. Let's see if the Soviets want us back in their faction. They don't, but it's a pretty close thing. So let's, let's let a little bit of time take by because Germany and Italy are also going to join the war. There we go. And now the Soviets suddenly love to be on our side. I don't know why, but 
uh, the stacking modifiers, I guess. Good. We are back in the common turn, baby. Sweet. All right. We're going to make that work for us now. And we're going to move everybody back to those original positions. Everybody back to the original positions there. And we're going to move the air in as well. All right. My transports have arrived. Let's quickly set up those paratroop orders. Oh, we're going to have to be quick on this. We have to be really quick. Because the AI does what it always does and doesn't put up air if you don't or if none of their opponents do, there is not a single airplane to be seen anywhere, which is great for us because I can start my paradrop orders and they're going to work and we're going to hit this tile. It's probably going to have a division in there. As long as it's not a good division, we should be able to dislodge it. Yeah, there's a division here, but it's not amazing. They got some entrenchment, but I think it's just their basic bitch infantry. Eh, got a bit of defense, but I'm gonna attack it from all sides. Force attack, baby, and we should be able to use the fact that they're fully encircled to overrun them. Yeah, this might take a little while, but we'll, we'll get them. I'm just glad I decided to opt for the good divisions approach instead of the many divisions approach. There we go. We've taken the port just as reinforcements are starting to show up. All right, so all of you guys head there. Actually, let's make it a bit like this. So that. Now funnel in the entire army and we're gonna go for a drive towards Nagasaki. Also, we have the airport, so the air is going up with all of our casts. Let's make a fight of this. I think we can hold until, yeah, we should be able to hold until the troops make it. And I'll just reinforce the line and we're gonna go for a party. Our air is also doing excellent. All right, Germany and Japan have done their thing. So I have 70 days from now on. I have 70 days to capitulate Japan before they, you know, you know what they do. Should be enough if I uh, play my cards right. So it should be enough. 70 days, go. It's going to be tight. It is going to be tight. It's been about 30 days now, I think. Oh, we've almost got him. We've almost got him, but just the walking speed of the units is gonna be what keeps me back. Still, you know, keep, keep attacking, keep going, keep going forward. Japan is so committed everywhere that they'll never be able to defend themselves in time but i am running out of time as well i have like 10 days left come on just go to nagasaki and peace deal okay peace deal so they didn't declare on the usa yet now i just hope japan doesn't actually survive this because of how points are distributed we may very well run into a stupid scenario where I focus on taking ships and the Chinese AI shits itself and doesn't actually eliminate Japan, leaving them to survive as a husk with a focus tree that can still ruin my playthrough. We'll see what we can do. It looks like Japan is gone and they're my puppet, so they are doing the southern resource area, but I don't care because they're my puppet and they can't declare war anyway. Okay, <laughs> we can keep playing. And I got a nice fleet out of it. I got a fleet out of it, let's put it that way. Two aircraft carriers, a heavy ship, and two cruisers. Better than nothing. I am going to be building a whole bunch of military factories in Japan with the goal of integrating them. That way I can get the rest of their fleet. And we continue. We can continue our playthrough. Thank God for that. All right. Now, like I said, we want to take out the Germans. I think the best and easiest way to do that is to ask for military access from the UK and prepare for like uh, a D-Day of our own in in, uh, Germany. Let's work on those nuclear reactors. Nuclear Gandhi draws ever closer. These 24 elites should probably head for North Africa for no other reason than to uh, try and break the stalemate and maybe get a naval invasion off. I could try power dropping, but realistically not going to work. The AI allies and Axis all put up airplanes because they're fighting each other. There will be red air, most likely in Italy. I think a naval invasion is going to be the easier option. I do have the fleet for it. If I bring these boys in, I should have the fleet to uh, at least get like Sicily, maybe. And on that note, I think we should thank our paratroopers for their service. They will no longer be required. Transport planes are going to go. Sweet, my troops have already arrived. Can I afford to up their artillery even more? Get them more artillery and a bit of anti-air. Yeah, more or less. Make them elites as well. They shall be my shock troops until I can afford to make them motorized, which might still take a while considering our industry is very geared towards making more airplanes. The Indian Navy with two aircraft carriers. Never mind the fact that they're totally Japanese. They are the 
Indian Navy's aircraft carriers. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's much Italian resistance here, which is great. Let's make sure we can make it to Messina. Storm Palermo, go grab as much territory as we can. And now to bypass the Italians, head into Messina, hopefully get to Reggio Calabria and funnel the rest of the army across as well. Good. All right, so the downfall of the Axis has already begun December 1941 with the Indian naval invasion of Sicily. Also, it appears the Soviet Union has naval invaded Bulgaria, as they always do, so that is impressive. I am pretty glad to see Stalin hasn't completely folded, but I think current patch, Germany, Axis in general, really not that strong at all. I rarely, if ever, see them beat the Soviets, or at least push the Soviets a significant amount of distance. Yeah, they managed to get some troops in the way in Calabria, so I don't think I'll be able to push across this. These straits are a nightmare to push across. I have other means, so let's instead prepare for a naval invasion, hit them around Rome, cut them in half, and then do my thing. And these guys can already move across into Sicily, where they can hold the line. All right, send the navy out. Wait for green seas once again. Uh, usually the AI at some point pulls its fleet out, so all we gotta do is wait. All we gotta do is wait. Actually, I do have an air force now. Just put them over there. See if that does it. Is that Yeah, that tipped the balance. Naval invasion is off. Shift the air once again, and we are going to give them quite the headache now. If we can hit them around Rome, I can cut Italy in half, as I usually do, and that tends to be the end for Mr. Mussolini, usually. It does look like they have some guards around the their ports, but all in all, far too little, far too late. And we're moving in. We are moving in. Italy shall be destroyed, conquered, and overthrown. Yeah, that was significantly easier than anticipated, which is fine. I I don't mind easy. So I'm just going to focus on cutting them in half, and then we move. All right, so they're cut in half. That was, <laughs> again, easier than anticipated. Southern Italy is pretty much cleaned up, so this is all encircled. We'll just bunch them up, destroy them, move on. And when Italy falls, I have a clean shot. Uh, Vichy France isn't in the war yet. I don't think they will join. I think well, they might join soon-ish, but until then, I have a clean shot at the German underbelly. Now, I wonder when they're going to fire Mussolini. Couldn't, can't be that much longer. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> it was Mussolini. And Italy splits apart. Sweet. All right, cool. Uh, they can have that new territory. They can be my puppet. My juicy, juicy puppet. A whole lot of Germans did show up to defend Northern Italy, as uh, as is historical. Uh, it is a bit annoying, though, but I got air. I should be able to squeeze through there with just a little bit more pushing. Maybe be a little more clean with my uh, offensives. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I think I can get through, though. If at first you don't succeed, you use more cast, that'll probably solve your problems. So I've broken through around Venice. I think that is where I need to concentrate my offensives. Yep, that's the end of Italy. Yugoslavia's back on the map. <laughs> <laughs> However long that's going to take. Well, I th I'd say we're on a roll here, 1942, and we've pretty much turned the entire war on its head in both theaters. All right, so this entire northern section around Bolzano, that they're all cut off. It's just a matter of mopping up. I'll set up defensive lines here because I really don't want to push through the mountains. It's the worst way to try and kill Germany. I'll probably launch a naval invasion from the UK. Take as much land as I can, really, so the, uh, the allies don't have a good peace deal. As for the Soviet Union, I don't don't think they need my help. This is actually a pretty nice pocket. I really like this pocket. That is a good amount of divisions we've got trapped here. Now, I just noticed that Ironically, I'm running out of manpower. It doesn't help that we only have access to like 30% of our manpower. I really need to fix that. Quickest way, well, quickest. The only way to fix that is going administrative oversight that allows you to fix the agrarian society spirit. So this one you can fix through decisions. It means I need a lot of political power. Not great. I could still just go to extensive conscription, of course. I have plenty of manpower there. And it does look like Germany is already not holding up too great. Uh, Four million casualties taken. That's uh, it's not, not great. They don't even have that many divisions, so they're way outnumbered. All right, with that done, I think I'm going to redeploy. Probably want to launch a naval invasion of France, so I'm going to move my troops towards London, the shock troops, and the secondary army. Yeah, I'll move the secondary army there as well. I'm thinking hit them in France, try to link up with Vichy France, and as long as I don't ask or give military access to the French, the territory should go 
to me, meaning I can get some benefit out of it in the eventual peace deal because I, I, I'm going to fight the allies. I just need to make sure they come out of this peace deal as weak as possible. And I also have access to all my research slots now. So India is really turning into a big boy with full access to the research it requires and deserves. Ooh, Calais is already guarded. Ooh, Dunkirk is also guarded. Ooh, yeah, that is a lot of Germans guarding this area. Well, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Might need to use a force attack just to stand a chance here. Okay, I, I might make it. I might make it. Reinforce attack there. Let's try to spread out a little. I might make Dunkirk. Okay, I Dunkirk them. Good. All right, cool, 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 cool. The entire army is going to be deployed there along with the reserve army. You halt and redeploy. And we're going to try to make a rush towards the Swiss border. Cut the German Empire in half, essentially trying to seize as much of France for myself as I can. Lord knows it's going to be a challenge. With my reinforcement moving in, I think I can do it. We're getting close. We're getting close. Come on. No, I was stopped, but I can proceed. I know I can. Come on, fight. Fight, damn it. Oh boy, I'm really pushing it here. I am really pushing it and it's getting a little hairy. It's getting very hairy, mostly because I've been using a spearhead order and not an assault order or an, an attack order. As a result, my troops have decided to like leave half the front uncovered. Not Great. And we have made it to the Swiss border. Now, Lakshmi's troops will focus purely on dealing with this side of the Reich, I suppose. We're going to try and push them all back. And then I just need Green Army to hold until I'm ready to swing that way. Yeah, I am very precarious. This is super tenuous. Not, <laughs> not ideal in any sense. Plus, if Vichy France joins this, I'm sort of screwed, so I, I hope they won't. But it looks like I should have everything under control, more or less. Manpower issues or not, we are certainly plowing through. All right, time for my offensive into the Netherlands, or the Low Countries. Let's see if we can make some uh, something happy here. I'm gonna use my shock troops to push through, see how far I can really push it. I don't have a lot of units. This may shock you, but I have really have a tiny army, all things considered. I, I need to be precise and I need to make these pushes count. So ideally, I, I try to go for some encirclements here, which begs the question, encircle what exactly? Because it doesn't really appear like anybody's home in this area. Like there, there are virtually no Germans here. Where's the German army? There is no German army, so I'm just gonna push. Okay then. Yeah, if Germany's not gonna put up a fight, I'm not gonna feel sorry for them. I'm just gonna go for it. Uh, this is a little embarrassing, Germany. This is a little embarrassing. You could have at least pretended to care. Are you just making this whole thing seem way too easy? <laughs> All right, so I guess Germany's just gonna die. So in a historic turn of events, Indian troops storm Berlin, ready to take the capital of the Reich. And Berlin has fallen. It is done. Let's see if I can link up with that Soviet naval invasion. That should be the uh, final nail in the Reich's coffin. I have to give it to the Germans, though. They take a long time to die. And capitulation! Oh, ooh! Ooh, that's like 50,000 guns. That fixed my deficit right up. Sweet. I guess we're gonna go for a trip down to Bulgaria. And that will be that. Come on, take Sofia. And I can get out of here and move on to the final stage of the plan. I can nuke Britain. It's done. Oh, it's done. Now to make the best peace deal possible, which means puppeting. Uh, I'm gonna try and puppet as much of Germany as I can. Let's see how disgusting this peace deal turned out. So... <laughs> What did we do? <laughs> what did we do to France? We have France. We have France. And then we have Indian France. <laughs> Indian Belgium. Uh, the Indian Netherlands. Well, there's also the Soviet Netherlands. Indian Germany. Uh, okay. Overall, um, I think the common turn came out the 
overall winners here. Well, this is it. We've justified for Hong Kong, and I can go to war with the Allies. Uh, do I want to, though? Do I want to? Uh, let's take a look at this. Yeah, I think I can take him. I think I can take him. I'm not gonna call anybody else in unless I have to. I'm gonna try and knock them out with, like, a massive naval invasion of the United Kingdom. Take, well, massive. One army. Take out the UK, and then take out France if I have to, without calling anybody in, except maybe Indian France, so I can have them share in the spoils. Get my naval invasion going, and it looks green. It might still be green when I unpause. It is green! We are on our way to victory, baby! Now, I just hope they don't have the entire army at home. That will allow me to pull a sneaky on them. We are landing! All right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Spread out, spread out. Take everything now. This is Gandhi's ultimate revenge. Payback for the humiliation his people have endured at the hands of the British Empire. It's always shockingly easy to take out the United Kingdom, mostly because they are very, very spread out most of the time. They have a global empire. That means they have a global empire to worry about. All I have to do is invade one shitty island. Yeah, this is gonna be a little bit of an anticlimax, I'm afraid. Right, so this is gonna be over really soon. I'm just gonna call these Frenchmen in because I would very much like them to partake in the spoil so I can have a nice Indian France that isn't cut in half. And there we go. We have crushed the Allies quick and proper and we have got our revenge, but not our satisfaction, not yet. No, 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 no. First up, let's make France whole again. They deserve, well, they don't deserve to be whole, but um, I'll, I'll do it anyway. We have established a true communist world power. All we have to do now is wipe away the Chinese. We have a lot of history between us. We kind of want to settle things. And we are perfectly positioned now to take out the United States. And I'm still more than a year off from getting nukes. What is this? All right, let's declare that war. They don't have any guarantees. Naval invasion should be off without a hitch. And uh, let's see if we can actually land. I expect China has spent the last four years building troops. A million trillion bajillion units, which they will now have to spend garrisoning all those borders that don't matter, which is, which is kind of funny. Yeah, I should be able to take Shanghai. And from there, we take the rest. Again, this is just AI China. Very likely that all they've got is a bunch of soft attack based units. So should be able to win this relatively easily. Yeah, already made landfall. Get the rest of the boys in. Yeah, I'm going to need to upgrade that airfield. Air is going to be very powerful, shredding all these Chinese divisions. Like I said, the Chinese AI loves to use basic bitch infantry with virtually no support or maybe just a little bit of artillery and my boys chew those up like they're not even there one thing i am starting to realize is i don't have the number of troops to overrun china completely i got plenty of units i've got more in training but there's a whole lot of china i have to take for this to end this might be a problem just look at the casualties though this is pretty funny i, I just need to sit here and let them bleed because they will try to attack me they don't see a lot of units on the line you think i can take that but the ai doesn't take air power into account or the fact that my divisions are just way 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 better and as a result they bleed and it's happened i have researched nukes i have two reactors so we're building some nuclear weapons at last it's taken far too long let's build another nuclear reactor i had one in the queue there we go are we not i may not be able to use them on china but by god i will have them ready whenever i decide to take on america or i'll just use them on China if this takes too long. Also, the United States is justifying on us. Why? But in response, every single nation in the common turn is shipping troops across the Pacific. Oh, that is a freedom train. That is communism in motion, people. Look at it. Look at it. The workers of the world have mobilized in defense of one of their own. Oh, the United States is surrounded. Soon, my brothers. Soon. First, we need to deal with the Chinese problem. It won't be much longer. I, I promise you that. Oof, eight. 100,000 lost, but I've killed like 3 million of the Chinese. And there goes communist China. It's just a little bit further, guys. Just a little bit further. You know what? You know what? A little morale boost. A little morale boost. There we go. Nuclear Gandhi in action. Let me slow that for you. Chongqing. Behold Chongqing, capital of China. And that was Chongqing, capital of China. Oh, 
it's over. It's over. It's finally over. Oh my god. Time to just puppet what I can and be done with it. Poor timing, Stalin. Poor timing. Well, great timing, I guess. We have a big communist China and Stalin's gone to war with the USA. I guess we're kicking off the Cold War immediately. Now to make this invasion of the United States a success, I have chosen the most elite of our members to function as shock troops, motorized shock troops. I will supplement these with mechanized shock troops if the war lasts long enough. But the members, again, will be the great champions of this offensive. If you want to see yourself featured in one of my videos, remember, check out the membership if you feel like it and you want to see yourself gather glory. And my generals are ready to go to party. Let's slow the game down a little bit. It's going to be slow enough as it is. Let's go. Oh, I should probably call all my puppets into this war because this will be the final war, the war to end all wars. And this is always funny to me. Oh, look at it go. Yeah, so much for air dominance. I'll be honest, I had significantly higher hopes for this offensive. It appears my hopes and dreams are soon to be crushed. Still, I am going to keep going, keep pouring more resources into this. Eventually, we will break through. Yeah, this is going to go a lot better than my attempts at uh, just trying to battle plan my way through this. So just cut off New England and focus on taking them out that way. It's much cleaner, much, much cleaner. Take New York. Come on. Come on. It's New York taken. All right. That means I'm going to set my trucks on the New England side and we're going to try to collapse this. Yes, 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 yes. That's what we're going to do. Make sure they don't break it back open. And then everybody just redeploy to make sure these borders hold. Oh, uh, they forced me out of New York already. Fantastic. All right. So Boston's taken. These guys are inserted. I would have assumed there were more units stuck here, but I guess they pulled most of their guys out through the sea access. And I I don't really have the navy to stop them. I don't have enough. Con oh, I took a hit. Then again, I think I do think I won this. That's a heavy cruiser, a coastal defense ship, and a destroyer. Eight. Oh, sorry, eight destroyers in exchange for a carrier and ten destroyers. Yeah, I'd say that's a win. Or at least we've conquered New England. Yay. Well, I'm guessing from here, the members will push towards Philadelphia and Washington. Obviously, I'm going to order a nuclear strike on Washington first, but you know. Gandhi strikes again. Washington is gone. We've encircled Philadelphia. There goes Philly. Happy days. Happy, happy, happy days. Right. Los Angeles. Prepare to be nuked. It's the only way. It's the only way. LA and San Francisco. It's the only way to resolve this issue. Behold, the cities of LA and San Francisco. Boom! baby oh that felt good <laughs> i'm not gonna deny that felt good who would have thought the indian army storming miami well the indian army overrunning the entirety of the united states of america we have nuked three of their major cities i don't think there is a question here who is the superior nation and there it goes. The United States of America has gone the way of the proverbial dodo. And now we can split the spoils between us. And with that, we have turned the world a nicer shade of red. We have spread the joys of communism, extreme violence and nuclear fire. We have turned Gandhi's dream into a reality. India is no longer humiliated, oppressed conquered, subjugated. No, now it's her turn to do all of that. Anyway, I had quite a bit of fun playing this. I hope you guys had fun watching it and I hope you guys will enjoy this next video as well. See ya.